This is ABC. Something to drink, sweetheart? Oh, no, I'm on a diet. But it's diet, 7-Up, with a little sugar in it. Sugar? Sure, sugar lets the natural flavors through and gives you energy. Diet 7-Up helps satisfy your appetite with only about one-third the calories of regular soft drinks. Well... Sure, Diet 7-Up helps save your diet when your willpower won't. I say my underwear has to be comfortable. You can say whatever you please, but it simply must be durable. Comfortable! Durable! Comfortable! Durable! Why not get him body wear? Body wear is the men's underwear from Sears with the comfort he wants and the durability you need. Washing after washing. Get him body wear now during Sears' great semi-annual sale. Now briefs, t-shirts, athletic shirts, and boxer shorts, three for $3.19. We design it, we make it, we deliver it free, and put it where you want it, in the bargain. R.B. Furniture and then some. Channel 7, KABC TV, Los Angeles. From Hollywood, the dating capital of the world, it's The Dating Game. And here's the star of our show, your host, Jim Clay. Oh, you're beautiful. Well, this, this, this is one of those very special dating game days because today we'll be presenting another of our special surprise dream dates, meaning that one of our lucky couples will be discovering that they'll be taking off on a faraway glamorous date to a faraway glamorous place. So you can bet there'll be excitement aplenty when that moment comes around. And to add extra spice to the situation, both games will feature alumni bachelors who have played the dating game before but weren't chosen. But today, one of them is sure to be the lucky surprise dream date choice. So stick around. The fun begins right after this message. Back in the days when Grandma baked her own bread, made her own jams, put up her own peaches, Campbell's was the brand of soup she served. Grandma trusted Campbell's, and her family ate many a warming bowl of Campbell's soup. Almost everybody has grown up with Campbell's, didn't you? Mmm, good. Mmm, good. That's what Campbell's soups are. Mmm, good. Kids, dipsy dandy, fluffo candy. <laughs> I got them all the treats the kids like best. Hey, want to see a hot item? Dole bananas. Kids love them. Of course, uh, they don't know bananas are good for them, you know, vitamins and everything. So keep it quiet, okay? <laughs> kids don't buy what's good for them. Here you are, kiddo. A dole banana jolly folly. Sometimes what kids don't know is good for them. So give your kids nutritious dole bananas. It's time for the continuing story of Somerset. And earlier on most of these stations, be sure to watch the continuing story of Another World. Daredevils in search.
Save big dollars on clothes for little scholars at Whitefront. For no fuss fashion, only 366 buys your choice of girls' double knit skirts or stylish slack sets. They're made of the new acrylics for easy care. Top them off for only $1.99 with these fashion right permanent press blouses of Dacron and cotton. Or choose 100% nylon pull on tops that are completely machine washable. For perky back to school fashions, think of Whitefront. Dawn breaks over Nairobi village. Shortly the walks and pathways are filled with people. They have come to see the world's newest and most remarkable animal sanctuary. 30 miles north of San Diego, the San Diego Zoo's wild animal park. Experience Africa, Asia, from your safari train. See hundreds of wild animals roaming free. Open now, the San Diego Wild Animal Park. Southern California's most complete news coverage is next. The big win that wasn't. Bill Keen talks about the hurricane that got away. A big haul off Catalina Island. Pot, not fish. I'll have that film story. The quality of judging becomes a major issue in the Olympic Games. Gil Stratton has the latest on that. Chicago, Chicago, wonderful town. But what about the rock group of the same name? Dave Sheehan, listen to him. This is the big news of Wednesday, August 30th. A complete report of the day's events by the most distinguished team of reporters in Western television. Once again, Jerry Dunphy. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. If you were battered by Tropical Storm Gwen last night, if you were swept by its wind and pelted by the torrential downpour, you were having a pretty good-sized nightmare, that's what. Bill Keene's back with us to explain that dream storm. He's a little tired. Bill, is it true that you were up all night laying sandbags at Encino? Of course I was, Jerry. But there's one thing about a hurricane. The reason they name them after ladies is because they have a prerogative to change their mind. Gwen, last night, shortly after we told you that she was coming up here and going to smite us with all her might, changed her mind very definitely. Actually, what happened was Gwen started out right down here off Baja, California, yesterday morning. And the projected storm course of Gwen was something running very close to Los Angeles and expected to go into the coast somewhere around Vandenberg Air Force Base last night. But Gwen, being, as I say, a lady, decided that wasn't the way she was going to do it at all. Shortly before 11 o'clock last night, she changed her course to a little more northwesterly and wound up as a very, very minor tropical storm somewhere west of Guadalupe Island. And as she hit the colder water, just seemed to be content to take a westerly course. And that's what happened to Gwen. However, before she left, she threw enough moisture up into the Los Angeles basin. We did have a great deal of thunder shower activity both last night and again today. And of course, we had some very heavy seas in the Southern California coastal areas. So the uh, story of Gwen is not one of one that was really lost, Jerry. She just changed her mind, that's all. I wasn't even included on those thunderstorms. I didn't hear any. Oh, they were around there all day today. Radar has been picking them up throughout Southern California. Just, just one didn't pretty hit hard you, to find them, huh? No, it didn't quite produce quite the thunder shower activity we expected. But it was there. And it's better to warn on the safe side than on the sorry later side. That's right. I think you need a vacation. I don't need a it's vacation. It's been a for Are you kidding? There's another hurricane <laughs> down there about four days away. I don't know whether I'll even mention it, but it's there. All right. See you later. Okay, Jim. Some strange things were happening in the bizarre business of drug smuggling today. Al Wyman tells of one man, David Peterson of Costa Mesa, involved in a marijuana seizure said to be worth over a million dollars. The marijuana was found aboard the trimaran Maya, which was tied up at Catalina. The one-ton haul was the result of more than three weeks of investigation by the Sheriff's Narcotics Bureau and U.S. Customs agents. It wasn't the largest haul ever made, but it was one of the most unusual. The observation is here that this is what uh, is known to old-time narcotic officers as a, a righteous key. It uh, weighs what it should. It's professionally prepared and uh, it's uh, in good uh, container so that uh, if transported, uh, the order of it won't go out and uh, be noticed. And it's well trademarked and, uh, and, and, and packaged in such a form that we know what each one weighs. You mean it even, even has a trademark? It has a distinctive one and we're all interested in it. As you can probably see here, it shows a picture of a roadrunner with the words beep beep and then paisano. 
Uh, I'm not too sure uh, what that means to the person that put it on there, but it's an interesting trademark that we're glad to see and uh, hopefully can learn more about. A portion of this particular seizure was shoe boxes, again wrapped in the plastic material, and the shoe boxes contained only the flowering tops. The brick contains the stems of the plant, the lower leaves, and just uh, chopped up, pressed into a brick. Here we have the very potent top of the plant alone. In zoo nursery, where they're being bottled fed a special milk formula until they become six to eight weeks old. The cubs are the first ever born at the zoo. Siberian tigers are the largest and rarest of the cat family, with only about 350 of the snow-dwelling animals left in the world. Incidentally, another tigress, apparently inspired by Sager's accomplishment, gave birth to a single cub in the same enclosure today. Visitors to the zoo may see the cub. And that's the news. Thanks for watching. Back tonight at 11 with Bill Keen and Bob Dunn. The big news continues with Walter Cronkite from New York following a KNXT editorial.